السلام عليكم الشيخ محمد علي and الشيخ جواد thank you for joining us on this special occasion uh, of having both of you on one show before I begin I want to ask has have we done a show together have you done a show together before or other than Instagram no I don't think so this is the first time yeah. so I'm I have the honor of having both <laughs> the Sheikh Shamalis with us um, before I begin Sheikh you have one minute Sheikh Jawad <laughs> to explain the hadith excuse <laughs> me say he <laughs> does this all the time so <laughs> we'll start with this one minute only Sheikh Jawad um, so there's a hadith by Imam Jawad alayhi salam salamu alayhi oh. he says uh, mu'min needs three qualities tawfiq mm. min Allah wa'adha min nafsi wa qabulim min man yansahu so <clears throat> I want to explain them backwards in therapy, one of the problems we have with people is if we tell them what's wrong with them, they're not going to accept. So you have to help them figure it out. So the hadith mentions that someone should tell you what you need to know, but there has to be inside. You need to accept that. And people will not accept their shortcomings because it's difficult to accept. So you need a kind of support from God feeling the idea that God will support you no matter what to be able to accept that. So I think the hadith kind of mentions the whole therapy process and how a lot of people find it difficult to accept their shortcomings so their healing prolongs. So... Your one minute is up, I think. There we go. Ah, so that's 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 yeah. Sheikhna, um, Alhamdulillah, I'm sure it's uh, something amazing to see Sheikh Jawad Recently, alhamdulillah, progress. I want to start off by asking you about, and of course the tawfiq and the success, I'm sure it's from God subhanahu wa ta'ala, but ask you about the tarbiyah of Sheikh Jawad, the upbringing of Sheikh Jawad. If you can share a story with us about Sheikh Jawad in, your, in his upbringing that maybe our viewers can benefit from, especially in difficult times of parenting, uh, some advice when it comes to upbringing. And especially with Sheikh Jawad. <laughs> <laughs> Something that many times comes to my mind is not about upbringing, but uh, also maybe related. So I remember when uh, we were in Manchester, end of 96 up to 2000, I was in Manchester. So Sheikh Jawad at that time um, was uh, maybe five years or till 10 years, for example. So in that time, maybe it was five years, six years, seven years at the time. So uh, I don't know what uh, his mom was, uh, you know, t uh, telling him. Mm. And he said, you know, don't teach me moral philosophy. Falsafia. <laughs> 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 and it was very interesting well, because a child of that age, you know, Speaking of even uh, saying the word, you know, moral philosophy was very funny. But uh, uh, I think... Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah has blessed us with uh, two great sons, mashallah. And great daughter, Sheikh Jawad, mashallah, is our second son. Yes. And I think was uh, all what his mother did himself and school. So I had also a little lower, but uh, I think uh, as long as others are concerned and his own efforts and uh, search for, you know, knowledge or truth etc yeah i only mentioned because um a lot of our youth now have become parents mm -hmm. uh, and with the challenges that they face uh, in a fast wilding world that's changing every day with uh, modern uh, things always improving with the technology always improving it's become some say easier, some say more difficult parenting. Uh, so that's why I started off with uh, with this with this about um, the upbringing. Uh, I, there's a few themes, obviously, I'd like to discuss uh, in today's podcast. Knowing that even though we're recording this before Muharram, it will broadcast in uh, the month of uh, Muharram, and uh, I thought we'll start off by discussing who we remember in the month of Muharram. That being uh, Imam al-Hussein, uh, peace be upon him, uh, and his message. Uh, how do you feel we've uh, 
propagated the message of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, and this is obviously for for you both maybe to discuss and ponder how, and especially in the in the West. Uh, to our communities and to those outside of the communities, I think there's hardly anything outside the community. But let, maybe let's concentrate on our communities. How has the message of Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam been propagated? Has the message been the th- true message of Imam Al Hussein been understood by the people? Has the message been diluted? Uh, what do you? How do you feel the message is going with Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam? And if we're doing uh, Enough to make people understand who Imam Hussein is. No, I'll ask you. Hope you start afterwards. I'll say something. <laughs> you know, I think that we have to acknowledge uh, great efforts made by people in our community and sometimes outside our community you know because not only Shia who talked about Imam Hussein yes uh, many of our Sunni brothers many of our Christian you know uh, friends you know they have done and also Hindus etc about Imam Hussein alayhi salam. but in our community you know uh, since the martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, the year 61 till now uh, many many people have worked hard to first uh, keep this message available and second mm. to pass on and there were times that uh, it was very you know difficult it was costing them lives mm. costing them tortures you know for example uh, in the time for example of Saddam in Iraq you know sometimes you know, holding just a majlis for Imam Hussein was a big problem there are countries that banned, you know, these things, you know. Uh, many people great, uh, made great efforts, you know, from their money, time, lo- you know, everything. Uh, many uh, scholars, many uh, speakers, many reciters, many poets, artists. So we cannot uh, ignore all these great services. But whether this has been enough adequate that's another issue especially with now expansion so for example you know, now we have community in the west uh, so for us this is not very you know uh, established you know situation you know so maximum most of our community here are in the second generation third generation maybe fourth generation mm. it's not more than that definitely so to bring the message to this time and to this uh, expanded situation and at the same time taking it further to prepare for coming of Imam Mahdi Sharif is something that needs uh, you know much more work so we have had you know good steps but they are not enough on the other hand, in addition to those great services, uh, we have also some, you know, unfortunately impure or, you know, unwise, sometimes impure, sometimes unwise, you know, associations, you know, people, you know, brought some customs or some ideas or misunderstandings. So it's not that it was just a pure current coming. Other things sometimes also have been mixed. So in my understanding we have three things to do one is to preserve whatever good we have received Mm -hmm. in any form is it a scholarship is it art is it you know uh, poetry is it uh, i don't know the way we run majalha whatever is good we should keep it but whatever is not acceptable or it's not acceptable in this time maybe at one point somewhere was okay but now is not acceptable we have to leave it aside and the third thing is to go to a you know different level to you know make progress uh, because in this time 
uh, humanity has lots of issues that maybe these were not you know before and we want to see what the message of Imam Hussein has to offer for a solution and healing for these problems as well mm. because message of Imam Hussein uh, is a whole package of life which is the pure Islam of course and this cannot be you know only for example about how to resist against for example unjust ruler or for example I don't know how to do Amr al-Ma'roof for example in political issues only yeah so, for example, what is the message of Imam Hussein for families today? What is the message of Imam Hussein, for example, for businesses today, you know? So, or for example, international organizations, lots of things that we have today that uh, we need to make sure that the message is preserved and also made, uh, you know, available like a tree that is, you know, bringing kollahinan, uh, uh, so uh, these three things we have to do preserve whatever good we have received be grateful uh, set aside but of course not it's not easy uh, whatever is not any more useful or acceptable or fr even from the beginning wasn't acceptable and third to develop it further and therefore this needs uh, collective work this is not that one person or one community can do it. This needs all our talents, all our artists, all our you know youths, activists, organizations, ulama to be involved uh, and under the direction of our maraja. Uh, we should all do these things. But since we don't have that kind of coordinated you know efforts, mm. so everyone should try to. Uh, connect with people who are like-minded or people who are available and do things that they are sure everyone is happy but not take risk by doing things that you know are not yet accepted by community or are not accepted by our leadership etc so uh, we can maybe discuss in more details later so when I'm saying we should take it further I don't mean that every person should say you know now uh, after 14 centuries now I have to take it further myself. It's something that we all have to contribute Collective. and work together. So this is a, you know, brief understanding of situation that I have. Of course, maybe yes. there are better explanations. <laughs> Thank you, Sheikh. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so three three points, Sheikh Jawad. Yeah. Do you think we've we've diluted the message, or do you think we've? Uh, um, I, well, the thing is, there are so many people in the we, and there are so many. It's it's not one, of course, yeah, one uh, strong group. Yeah, so uh, I personally really, a lot, there are so many things we need to do. For me, a lot of my focus is on our own personal lives, what we can benefit individually, and uh, I think there we still have a lot that we can learn and benefit from it. Um, and one of the things is that I feel like some people have a lot of beautiful motivation to spread the message but I'm like as that said there's still levels we can go deeper or the one way of going deeper is to understand the message ourselves more implement it more and and become more beautiful as a result of knowing Imam Hussein uh, a few weeks ago we were in uh, Amsterdam there was an Iraqi father there and the way he treated his family was so beautiful. Uh, the whole time in his car, I was so like, how is he so nice? How is he so kind mm. to his children? So patient. And uh, later on, I'm thinking about all of this in my head. And then later on, after a few minutes, we were speaking. He said, you know what? Uh, a while ago, you were talking about um, Imam Hussein on the day of Ashura. His daughter calls him. And it's in the heat of the moment, it's, but still a mom is very calm, treats her with so much respect, doesn't say, can't you see, we're busy, we don't have time, etc. Mm -hmm. He says, when I heard that, I was like, I have to be like that with my daughters. And before him telling me that, I had seen what a beautiful father he has become. So he said that was just one line of Imam Hussein's life had given him the inspiration to become like that. This is the part I'm very interested in. 
our families becoming more beautiful, our relationships becoming more beautiful, inspired by Imam Hussein. Uh, that's an area in which I think there's so much still work that we can do. When we uh, speak to our communities yeah. during Muharram, Sheikh, do you, how do you select your, this, uh, of course both of you speak during Muharram, uh, how do you select your topics? What you feel? Does it change to where you're going, or do you have a set mission that I'm this year? I'm going to discuss this, 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 and I feel this is important. So it doesn't matter where, if I'm reading in London or I'm reading in Canada or I'm in Africa or anywhere else or in the States, or do you actually cater for? How easy or difficult is it? Because the selection of topics, I think, is very important during, because you you have people yeah. that don't attend their mosque yeah. the whole year, yeah. but you can guarantee he will be there Shabbat yeah. Ashur. Exactly. You yeah. can guarantee he'll be there the night of Abu Fadl Abbas because he's got that connection. Yeah. So you've gone. You've only got him for that one hour, in the three hundred and sixty-five night days. Yeah, yeah. So how do we? Uh, what are the topics? That you select, not away, obviously giving away your topics this year. Yeah. We all know what Sheikh Jawad's is, is to do with loving God. Yeah. <laughs> but how do you select the, the, the topics? For me, uh, the first years uh, was more, for example, things that uh, you know I thought people should know about Imam Hussein alayhi salam, etc. But then, uh, little by little, because I also try to have my lectures available so that people can watch online watch online even previous years you know uh, then I tried uh, to see uh, what is you know the need of that community or our community in general but after talking about all these things uh, so now it's a mixture of what our community needs and what uh, new uh, you know kind of uh, offshoots uh, i have in my own thinking yeah because i don't want to repeat what i have said before unless there is a need for you know repeating i don't mind to repeat you know some of the things like you know social well i, I repeat yeah. as much as possible but uh, i don't want to repeat the whole muharram so I try to see what people need, but also what is uh, concerning me, what is, you know, in my mind for the whole year. Mm. So it's not just Muharram, the month of Ramadan also the same. Yes. So uh, when uh, I have, you know, something in mind which is ready, you know, which is uh, possible to share, then, uh, for example, uh, that can be a good candidate. But I try always to consult also. I consult people who invite, what, you know, what their community, for example, needs or faces. And I have, you know, some of uh, uh, my, you know, brothers, you know, uh, you know, people that, you know, we study together, you know, mm -hmm. so there are, you know, different circles uh, with family. So I consult many people and uh, sometimes, uh, just uh, up to a few days before Muharram, still thinking is you know of course. going on. Sometimes something like one incident or something like happens. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know <laughs> may change. Yeah. So I remember, for example, Muharram uh, three years ago. So we were before Muharram in Iran, and we were coming. So uh, on the plane. Uh, still I was thinking and because just a few days before Muharram you know, I, still I was thinking you know and then I thought uh, maybe I will talk about uh, uh, Surah al -Ankabut. and in the plane you know I was reading Surah al and uh, then uh, in my mind came to talk about uh, as sunnah al ilahiya divine you know universal laws and then it's you know, s some ideas come and they are not weighty. They go. Some ideas come and <laughs> <set up>. they <laughs> stay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm. So then, Alhamdulillah, I took that Muharram about this. Uh, you know, mm. that was the series in Watford. Yeah. Yeah, in Watford. That was very good. And Alhamdulillah, I was yeah. myself very much benefiting, and people said, you know, they benefited. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's you know something that many factors have to work together. You know, du'a, etc., so that. 
the topic comes. You, you, Sheikh mentioned consultation, mm. um, which is quite important. Man sharak al nas aqulahum, whoever shares people's brains. Yeah, is a hadith that we have from Amir yeah. al-Mu'minin. Do you consult? I'm sure you consult also your peers, but do you also consult your father when it comes to certain topics you want to tackle or certain uh, topics you'd like to discuss? Yeah, I I get uh, advice from dad. Yeah, w- with regards to topics, a lot of the times I I check on Instagram to see what are people dealing with. Okay. What are people's problems? So we usually put a story up saying, what are your challenges? And then we see what are the common themes. I say we because it's me and Zahra, not that I refer to myself as we. Yes. But, mm-hmm. uh, and then we, we look at the common theme and then they're obviously in order to um, prepare myself for that. Obviously, I talked to that, for example, Las Muharram, I think that gave me a lecture series of a person um, commenting on some of the works of Allama Taba Tabai. Mm-hmm. And that kind of shaped the lecture series for Muharram last year. Um, the Islamic background of it. Mm. So yes, I try to. You, I'm guessing you get a lot of uh, messages and DMs, as they call them, and yeah. f- on your Instagram and other social media. Do you check all of these posts? Because I'm sure there's people maybe now watching, waiting f- to get a response yeah. from you. Yeah. Do you actually try and check everything that you get? Because I'm sure that a lot of people try and get in yeah, touch. Yeah, we. We try as much as we can. Uh, it's not possible now, especially because it's increasing. But to the extent that we we can, we try to reply. But also a lot of like now what we're trying to do is to tell people if you have questions, come for our spiritual Saturday sessions because there we have an hour and a half and anyone who has questions, they can come and ask it then. Um, so yeah, that was a solution. We thought it makes it easier to, to answer questions. Online, uh, obviously, before COVID, I know, yeah. Sheikh, you used to make sure your lectures are recorded. Even when we used to attend uh, uh, Hausa, you used to make sure they are recorded. If, if there wasn't a camera, you'd put your phone <laughs> and you'd record. You uh, And I, 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 as someone that works in media, I thought that was impressive because... It can be shared with others. You know, I always, uh, when the center, uh, I, I want to know about them, I check their YouTube channel. Mm. I see what cameras they have and what quality they are using. <laughs> You'll know, you know, again, some yeah. centers like to put, uh, they don't invest in, others do their own choice. But I'm saying you, you always invested in, and you mentioned it now that they are recorded. You invested in, in, uh, in making sure they are recorded and to a certain extent at a good quality so people can watch and follow. And then we had the lockdown. Yeah. And then everyone realized, oh, we can't have people in our mosques. We need to turn online. Yeah. Some, of course, were prepared better than others. But we noticed in at yeah. least a year, everyone turned online. I th- remember, I think, especially the first Shahar Ramadan in 2020 with the pandemic, Everything was online, you know, because we were under severe yeah. lockdown. Uh, and obviously, Sheikh continued this with his s- yeah. spiritual Saturdays that he yeah. that he does. And someone that works in the media, for me, media is very important. And I always feel that we can do better with media and with encouraging people to become journalists or become people that are involved in some sort of field within the media, because this is our message and as you know, media controls the narrative. Um, and I wanted your, both your opinion. Do you, how, how much lacking are we with that regard? So, or do you think we're actually okay with the media? I think that good efforts are, are being made. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So that is really nice. Um, and I think it's, it's the time to... Um, Alhamdulillah, the technical part of it, that's your specialty. You should say how is the technical side of it. Uh, the side that I'm really focusing on is making sure that as the content increases, the quality also mm. increases because content for the sake of content just creates confusion. Um, so, yeah, that would be my... Report. Quality over, con- over quantity, of course, yeah. Yeah, I, I think quality is very important. You know... Uh, as Sheikh Jawad said, you know, Alhamdulillah, there have been progress. 
uh, I think there are different aspects to this. One is that we should, uh, you know, use media and, uh, you know, good pro platform which are available. And I think in this regard, our community uh, has made great progress uh, when it comes to internet, social media, mm. uh, which didn't need that much of maybe preparation or resources, or there was more freedom. But for example, when it comes to TV, to cinema, to journalism, you know, newspapers, etc., maybe we didn't make that much progress. Mm apart in our own you know community islamic com countries but for example in the west you know but uh, since internet is something which is easily available you know and you don't need to have huge you know investment etc mm. i think our people uh, use the opportunity to you know produce something be available etc but uh, one thing is that we need not to neglect you know those things you know, like, you know, mainstream, you know, media also. The other thing is that uh, some people uh, are not very active. Some people seem overexcited and they want to put everything online or they want uh, to uh, start TV, I don't know, etc. You know. Uh, even you know, for example, you know, some people you know suggested to me, you know, we can you know, uh, you know, help you or you know, if you give us you know, for example, that you know, start you know, you know, TV channel, etc. And we need TV channels, but we don't need everyone uh, as soon as they have you know enough money, you know, for example, to start a new TV channel or you know. Uh, so we need more coordination, and I think we lack this coordination. Every person or a few people uh, they are doing something we appreciate of course you know as community you know we should appreciate we should thank we should praise but uh, uh, the work needs to be coordinated and also we should have different kinds of content for example we should have something for people who are very new to Islam, to Islam or people who are not very serious, for example, they're, you know, Islam, people who are uh, not uh, used to, for example, learning in a structured way. We need to have different things, but also we need to have something, for example, for people who are themselves as scholars, mm -hmm. who are speakers, who are teachers, yeah? So we need to have something that even a Sunni scholar, for example, can benefit or find, the, you know, something yes. useful. So we should have different things. When people don't coordinate, so there is something up to certain level that uh, everyone can do. Mm. But then after that, only when we put together our thoughts and resources, we can do. So I think, uh, Alhamdulillah, there are lots of great initiatives. and uh, I uh, pray for their success. But uh, we should not be satisfied and we should not underestimate the greatness of this job. You know, I have seen even sometimes some people, you know, with difficulty learn another language and then they start putting content on the internet. We, even without once traveling to that place, mm -hmm. <laughs> without knowing the problem on the ground, you know. Uh, once a person, you know, I normally you know, don't have interviews. So once a person, you know, wanted to tell him for something scientific but then get into these things so i said you know i don't know the west enough mm. uh, i said i have uh, studied western philosophy for my ba ma i did my phd here i have been uh, living in the west i've traveled a lot in touch with you know sony christian university but without any you know exaggeration i really don't know the west mm. i am I'm just familiar i i'm not in a position that i know the west you know i'm an expert of the west because 
even I'm not expert on my own country, you know. <laughs> yeah? If you want to say, you know, that, for example, you are expert on Iran or Iraq or Lebanon, it's not just, you know, living there all your life. It's not enough. Anyway, I said, I just know enough to know that how I have to, you know, behave and how to react, where get my information, you know, things like this. But I'm not expert. But this person was, you know, very confident and has not traveled. And I said, you know, how you are you know, getting your information? He said, by <coughs> watching movies. I said, I watched many Western movies. And I said, this is just one source. I said, if you had watched all the movies in Iran before revolution, all of them, could you guess that there could be a revolution in this country? <laughs> no. Now, uh, uh, there are lots of movies in the West produced by Hollywood or outside, but we shouldn't think the West is just what is seen in the movies. There are many, many different types of people here. There are lots of thoughts, lots of philosophers, thinkers, you know, people who are very uh, moral people, lots of people who work by conscience, etc. Uh, just if you see movies, you get different ideas. So, People now somehow seem that some people are rushing into putting things on internet, etc. Because it's easy, they feel responsible. So uh, it has advantages and disadvantages. Mm. Now, even some people, for example, may, you know, make a movie. For example, you know, you know that how much we had, you know, problem yep. about some experience. So. Uh, media is very important is an area that it's like you know uh, for example uh, medicine it's like health it's like education yeah no community can ignore it but it doesn't mean that everyone uh, rushes and you know put something on internet or you know translate something and says you know or for example employ some people say you no know, make my clips for example into this language or that language and put it on internet it's much more complicated you mentioned uh, coordination more than once. Yeah. Um, but some who may be looking from the from the inside of the of our communities, here, especially in in the West, would say, uh, "What coordination? Why not? They're not even united. When this person doesn't go to this person, this person yeah. doesn't speak to this person. We." Um, and I hope uh, uh, I'm being as honest as possible that we love, again, I use the term we, not everybody, but yeah. as in yeah. to label. This yeah. person belongs to this. We put a label on him and this person's this label. You know, I'll give it my own experience. I'll share, you know, when I go sometimes to film a documentary or to film somewhere, they say what channel it is. So I say this channel. Or the worst thing you can say is say is my own channel. Because if you say you're your own channel, you they don't know who you are. They can't label you. If you say I belong to this channel, they'll straight away this channel belongs to this person. That means mm. they'll label you. They have this. Mm. But the worst thing you can do is to say this is my I'm doing my own freelance. They don't like freelance. Because if you are I'm talking about obviously filming back home. Because when you yeah. film your freelancer, who is he? Who's Muslim? Who's who does he see this group or this group? They can't label you, and this is causes a big headache for them. As in, who is this person? So we love to label, Sheikh. So coordination becomes <laughs> very difficult when you've just labeled people. And again, sometimes as before we started this podcast, me and Sheikh Jawad were speaking that it's good that we have a variety of views. It's good that we have different opinions, and this is the beauty of. I might be mistaken from my understanding. It's the beauty of the Shia school that we are open to opinions. We are open to discussion. There is always mm. ishtihad. But when we've labeled everyone and when we don't work with everyone and when we've, to a certain extent, sometimes do takfir of others, it's very difficult to coordinate. Mm. Uh, as much as we as a community have progressed, we have a real problem with, with unity, with working together. So I don't know what's your take on yeah of course if we had the unity then i think uh, we were very close to our you know aim uh, uh, 
so unity is a great thing that we can you know achieve and we are not close to it but as much as possible as much as possible we should at least respect each other for example one sad uh, phenomenon is that some people prefer to work in one way and they do it but then they attack others who do other things okay do your own work why you attack other people and it's not that they are more knowledgeable or you know more experienced just uh, you know they think this is the way okay do whatever you want to do uh, there is so much a space for everyone to work but the best thing is that either we coordinate or at least we uh, function within the uh, generally agreed ethos of the Shia that is the minimum so if I'm not working alone respect what is generally agreed by the Shia community yeah but if I want to do something that is not acceptable maybe I am right I have to be patient I have to discuss I have to you know because maybe also I'm wrong maybe I'm right maybe I'm wrong uh, uh, so we have to uh, you know work out some maybe guidelines and I don't say I have them ready but I'm saying maybe there are some guidelines that you know uh, need uh, to be worked out so that everyone knows that at the same time that Alhamdulillah in our community there is you know uh, encouragement for you know thinking being you know creative being uh, open being honest etc but also this is a legacy that we have inherited and belongs to all it's not just mine mm. yeah interesting so uh, sometimes I put it in this way I say for example there's a house if this house is given to us to use for example to me my you know siblings for example you know we are using a house <coughs> we must have some agreement among ourselves how each person can use his own part yeah mm. I cannot say okay if 20% or 30% is mine I do whatever you know I think is better yeah inshallah no one has bad intention just they think you know whatever they think yeah. is better so I say okay I want to make my part a mosque but you know they cannot then leave next to a room which is mosque you know so, so sometimes you make a mosque inside the house without having the concept of other shareholders is not right yeah or you know I want to make it a cinema and bring you know the youths here for it we need to discuss inside the family so the a school of Ahlul Bayt uh, is not something that you know anyone can claim that they own Sahih. yeah first of all we have Imam Zaman and we need to really make efforts to understand whether he is happy or not then under Imam Zaman okay we are functioning <laughs> yeah we are not the owner he's the one who is in charge but okay now we are functioning with the intention of pleasing Imam but which kind of agreement yeah at least something that is not taken by other people as you know a kind of uh, disrespect for the whole thing so it's on the other hand we have to be able to have you know some creativity we have to have you know mm. because you know lots of new things can be understood from Quran from hadith you know lots of new issues so to be able to remain part of the family but at the same time you know do your own you know expansion etc this is where the challenge is and this is uh, of course a nice challenge you know mm. <laughs> that uh, I should for, ex for example suppose I'm in Hosea and Qom maybe I have some ideas for example uh, I should have the wisdom to understand how I can uh, you know work on my areas uh, but at the same time not to appear to other people and the scholars that I am you know putting all their you know scholarship for example in bin mm -hmm. yeah so so as community it's very sensitive issue yeah it's not a personal thing you know that 
if it was for example if i was founder of a new religion you know that was easier <laughs> but i am just a member of a long lived you know tradition and there are lots of other you know shareholders and then there is a mom a so we have to be very careful at the same time we have to be vibrant we have to be active we have to be creative for sure islam you know um, and quran is a deep ocean that we haven't reached you know even half of it but but as a continuity of the tradition no one should say you know now we make a u turn of course not. <laughs> <coughs> yeah on, on on the ground Sheikh Jawad, do you think there's there's efforts being made to maybe unite especially because i know you you meet different communities yeah. you've interact with your online sessions you mentioned you know once you done a french yeah. lecture <laughs> someone came in to yeah. speak french and you saw interactions so i'm guessing there's people watching from different communities do you feel that where on the ground there's work being done to to unite at least our communities who are claimed to be followers of Ali ibn Abi yeah. Talib claim to be followers of the Prophet yeah um, I, I, I'm very aware of the places in which we are not united but I have a lot of hope because I feel like a lot of beautiful people are trying to do that so actually maybe a lot of the effort of me and my wife right now is actually uh, this part type of activities uh, bringing people together, seeing who's interested in these kind of things. And our experience has been that a lot of people are actually interested in unity. Uh, because I think, you know what uh, Sheikh Father said is so important. Once we realize that this is not our thing, we're all working for Imam Zaman um, and God ultimately, uh, that changes the, you know, puts everything into perspective. perspective. Yeah, you yeah. know, as if like, it gives us a higher thing, like a higher motivation to raise over our own personal issues that we may have with each other. And I have seen that there are so many people who are interested in that. And another thing which I thought is interesting to mention is that even those who are not, if you give them a nice story, they become interested. So mm. in one of the communities we're speaking, they said that initially there were so many divisions. They couldn't even have a community of Shia. It was like this uh, Iraqis, then this. But they said, we were like, let's try it. We want to try it. They call it the Ahl al-Bayt community. Mm. And initially, everyone was like, this is not going to work, etc. They came, a group of people showed others it's possible. And they said, in a few years, everyone wanted to be part of it. Once you show people how beautiful it is to work for, you know, for the Ahl al-Bayt without these kind of petty things, you give them a story, what we can achieve together what where we're meant to go <laughs> you know mm. the, i think that story is so beautiful it gives us the energy to to raise over our differences uh, so so i'm very optimistic Alhamdulillah. you yeah. mentioned hope yeah that you have hope and sheikh you mentioned imam mahdi mm. you both actually mentioned imam mahdi and you, I, I always remember this quote you once told us in a in a gathering you said and later on, we also did an interview about this. You said anyone who loves Imam al-Mahdi will bring hope. And then you spoke about hope in detail in one in, uh, an interview I did with you. And you said, you know, people can't live without hope. It's something you won't wake up in the morning if there's no hope. You have to have hope in, in everything. And you mentioned that today that, you know, Imam Zaman is the one that's we have we have to sort of please i'm not going to ask if we've pleased imam zaman i think each person will have to answer for themselves what what do you think the steps are for us to please imam zaman and since sheikh jawad mentioned hope i we hope that we with with you know all our work we've tried at least because you know intention as you mentioned your the intention of everyone is to is to serve and to please we're not questioning anyone's intention but what are the steps in your opinion when it comes to you know pleasing imam zaman good question but it's very comprehensive <laughs> i know sorry sheikh i know it requires 10 lectures in muharram <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mentioned a few points um, that maybe um, they stand out in my mind right now I think one uh, 
great expectation of Imam Zaman from each of us would be to be honest. Uh, nothing can be achieved with uh, this honesty. You know, to be honest, to be sincere. Uh, sometimes we are even uh, you know dishonest to ourselves. Unfortunately, it's a big tragedy that you know if I hide my own problems from myself. So honesty is a great thing. How in Salat, how in uh, fasting, in Hajj, you know, we have to have Qurba ila Allah. In the same way, whenever we do something, we have to have this Qurba ila Allah. Because there's a mistake. Some people think, I'm giving lecture. I am running this center. I am publishing a book. These are good things. Yes, Salat is also a good thing. But if your intention is not sincere, that Salat is not accepted. Even can be a burden if I do salat showing off. So I shouldn't be satisfied that I am doing something which in itself is good. You know, in Hose we say, you know, there's Husna Fa'ali and Husna Fa'ali. Mm. Yes, giving lecture, leading Jama'ah are good, but as actions. But we need also the agent to be. This is an area that I think we have to work a lot. Uh, whatever we do, especially if it is not personal only uh, to make sure that we have honesty i think if i for example give lecture with honesty but i am not giving very good lecture but i'm trying but i'm honest but i'm trying this would be more pleasing that if i give the most eloquent lecture you know but i'm not honest okay so honesty is I think one of those things that is very important and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his hujjah definitely look for sadq. The second thing is that our life, this is also another problem that I think we have, our life cannot be separated or divided into religious and personal yeah so i cannot say something on member mm -hmm. and then for example uh, do something else or when i go home i say something else for example yeah mm -hmm. uh, i cannot say on member for example money is not important but then in family for example everything is just money okay <laughs> Or, for example, I say, okay, when we go to masjid, we try to be pious, but when we are, you know, outside, it's different. So, I think Imam Mahdi Sharif expects from his followers to be consistent. Yeah? I think it's a great level uh, requirement of loyalty, that you have to be consistent. You cannot sometimes do... Uh, satanic things and sometimes you know good things you cannot sometimes follow Muawiyah and Yazid and sometimes follow Amir al-Mumin and Imam Hussein yeah? you have to be consistent and this consistency <coughs> is very important the third thing is that Imam Mahdi wants us to look after other members as well because there is no other way I can think how a leader how a father you know, can uh, expect you to treat, you know, people who are under him. Yeah? Mm. So if someone has 10 children, I don't know, more or less. Definitely for him, the way you treat his children is very important. You of cannot course. say, you know, I love you, I die for you. But if your children are in problem, I don't bother. I don't care. I don't care. Mm. Or actually, I have rivalry and, you know, I want to you know, put them down so that, you know, I can, you know. Come. Right, yeah. Yeah? If I love Imam, I should love the community of Imam, the family of Imam, mm. members of his, you know, congregation. So this is very important. So, for example, you know, and this comes to many areas. For example, you know, you go to Karbala, you go to Mashhad. I think one way to understand how Imam thinks about you 
is to check your heart how much you love people who are there. If you say, I wish no, no one was here. <laughs> <laughs> Because they push me when I do Zia. There's always this one, that one person that's pushing yeah. me. Or, you know, you, you want to make sure that, you know, you get the best place, etc. You know, push them aside. I think this shows that you are not a special person for a mom. But if you are take. there and you love people who are there, mm. and, you know, you want to be the last person to get anything, you know, if it's a good place, let other people benefit, you know, I want to help them, I want to make them feel comfortable, I want to be very patient with them, I pray for their dua to be accepted, their ziyara be accepted, then there is a chance that, inshallah, imam is very pleased with you. Mm. Because you have raised yourself from being a visitor to someone who is a servant and helping imam in looking after his zawwar, yeah? Awesome. Nice way to so Imam Mahdi needs people who are serving uh, his people because he needs us to be his hands. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, like you know, for example, imagine uh, uh, if you have a majlis, you know, or God forbid, you know, someone dies, you have funeral, etc. There are people who come to your majlis, you love them. Yeah, they have come to show respect, etc. But there are people who uh, start working. So they, someone, you know, um, organizes the shoes, someone goes to the kitchen to help, you know. You love these people more especially. Sure. Not the people who are just there and, you know, waiting, for example, someone serves them. So Imam expects from us to uh, love from bottom of heart, uh, people, community, the assets that we have. It, this masjid belongs to another marja or another group. It belongs to Imam Zaman or not. Mm. Okay? They are not working for me or for my leader or marja, but they are working for Imam Zaman. I should be happy. I should be grateful to them. This majlis for Imam Hussein is run by us. There are thousands of majlis which are run by other people. I should have concern for them. They should be successful. They sh so this is the third thing that I think Imam expects from us. And the fourth is that Imam expects from us to uh, you know, be a community which is based on knowledge and scholarship. Mm -hmm. Not a chaotic you know, community that you know, everyone you know, does you know, things. So connection to our, you know, marajah, connection to our houses, connection to our, you know, long history of scholarship. I'm not saying it's, in, you know, free from mistakes, you know, we are infallible, you of know. Of course. Neither we are infallible, nor our marajah are infallible, nor our, threat, you know, scholarship is infallible, but it's the best thing we have. Mm -hmm. This is something that uh, has proved over century that has kept us okay kept us moving so we cannot be in you know indifferent to for example because there are some people say you know i love Imam zaman but i don't bother about maraja i don't bother about homes i don't bother about you know taqlid i don't bother about you know hosas i don't want to study you know anything i just you know do whatever i think is good you know this is not going to work mm. so These four things that things that I can you know now you know emphasize on. Although these are not the only ones, but I think these are some fundamental ones. Uh, Sheikh Jawad, I'm not going to ask you obviously the same, um, uh, but I, I want to you know that this debate takes place. Obviously, it's been taking place for a long time, for hundreds of years, and it's also taking place in our time, which is. And I, I mentioned the question was how do we please our imams. Mm. Obviously, pleasing our Imam means pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. So the debate is, go to, why not go to Allah? Why always the Ahlul Bayt? Or the other way around, you know, you are talking too much about God, you're forgetting the Ahlul Bayt, you're neglecting yeah. the Ahlul yeah. Bayt. This debate takes place, and I, I recently also read some that speak about this, about the whole going directly to Allah or going to the Ahlul Bayt, you know, this, this takes, yeah. what's your take on w w when, you, when you speak to people and when you're speaking to different communities on this topic? Yeah. No, I, I think it's a very important question and I feel like both sides, I and mean, we can go wrong in both sides. Mm. Uh, a few weeks ago, someone asked me, 
because I always speak about how God is present, etc., etc. Et and he was like, if God is always present in there, why do I need the Ahlul Bayt? And I asked him, have you ever listened to a lecture and you felt like afterwards you feel God is more, you feel God's presence more? He said, yes. I was like, well, even before that lecture, God was present. But the lecturer helped you feel that presence more. And if a lecturer with all his shortcomings can do that, then the Ahlul can help you way more in feeling God's presence, right? So this thing, we are always doing it in every book we're reading, in every lecture we're listening to, we are getting help from someone to feel God's presence more. Mm. And I feel that Ahlul Bayt are the strongest place in which, strongest uh, people in helping us feeling God's presence who is always there. So. I don't think it's either the Ahl bayt or God. The Ahl bayt are the best place to find God. And I really, for example, this Dua Arafah, I, that we're recording this, you know, on the day of Arafah and being broadcast in Muharram. I think it's one of the purest, best places to get connection to God. And a lot of people are telling me, say, after reading Dua Arafah and the commentary, they feel like now they feel God's presence more than ever before. Mm. Um, so I think it's uh, it's... This is at least my understanding that uh, God, you know, in the Quran says, Subhanallah, Amma Yasifun. You know, God is exalted from what some people describe to Him. And then at some place, He says, Apart from those who are mukhlasin, there are some that have been purified by God. If they speak about God, then that is something you can rely on. And I feel like Ahl Bayt are the prime example of that. That's my. You, you've written, obviously, a book which was released recently on. Um Dua Arafah uh, One of the more Alhamdulillah we are blessed to be in a school That has such du'as yeah. Like Arafah and Kumail And Dua Sabah and Tawbah yeah. And Abu Hamza and Joshua Alhamdulillah this is a blessing yeah. And we have such 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 du'as And what makes our school of Very unique because of these yeah. Du'as what, you know, what, what inspired you for From Dua Arafah to pick that Dua to write a book about Alhamdulillah, I'm blessed to have read the book. If you haven't, please order the book. There's a few copies left, I understand. Yeah, yeah. What, you know, what amazed you, what inspired you from yeah. Dua Arafah to actually take it upon yourself? I, I'm not sure if there's other English commentaries. I haven't come across it. Yeah. But, you know, it's very rare to find a commentary yeah. on Dua Arafah in English. Yeah. You know, what, 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 what was the reason for that? Well, you know, for for many of us, we've loved Imam Hussein since we were children. Yeah. But I barely got the chance to know what was his view. What what? How did he feel like inside? Mm. How did he feel about God? What did he think of Insan? How did he, what was his? You know, how did he feel towards his parents on an emotional level? Uh, when he's in when he is in pain or in difficulty, what would he say? You know, and Dua Arafa gives a window to all of these questions. You know, and, and it's so beautiful. Like the Imam talks about how he understands God, which is so beautiful. The love he has for God, and it's so pure that just by reading it, you feel like something's happening inside you. So many people have told me. The first moment they felt God's love for themselves was when they were reading Imam Hussein's words in Dua Arafah. Many people have said that. So you get to see that. You get to see how um, Imam, uh, you know, for example, the difficulties in his life. How does he talk about that with God? See, he takes them to God and he gets his strength. Th there are so many of these elements that, that can really help us in our own life. And the most important thing after all of this, how to find God in our own life. I feel like Dua Arafah is a workshop. And Imam Hussein is taking our hand and saying, see, look at this aspect of your life when you were born, the love your parents showed you. Look at this aspect, you went through a difficulty, then this happened. He tries to help you look at your own life and find, you know, God's hand there, the metaphorical hand. And so uh, it's, it's amazing. I, I feel like it's really you're sitting at a course of spirituality with Imam Hussein as the teacher. And it's a workshop. Also. It's a workshop. Yes, yes. And it's impossible that by the end of it, you're not a different person. I really think so. I, when I was uh, on my way to come here, I think you might have shared this yesterday or the day before. It was a clip about the generosity, the rahmah, the, the kindness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I watched it. Uh, it was uh, two or three minutes. And I'll share it with your permission. Sure. Uh, that you mentioned, uh, I hope I get the story right, that Prophet Musa, Allah asked him to go towards a mountain 
and uh, he saw this old woman she was very frail and she was crying and she was upset and he said Musa told her what's wrong she said my son bought me here and left me and she was crying so Prophet Musa thought that she's crying because of what her son did to her the fact that he's bought her because he's looking after her and he's had enough he bought her here and he left her in the mountains and he said you know why are you crying you know because she said I'm not crying because of it's now dark and it's night time and I'm upset and I'm worried and I'm concerned about my son going back home after he's left me in this mountain uh, because maybe an animal will attack him or maybe he'll get lost or something so I'm, I'm upset about this and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Nabi Musa I hope I've got the story right Sheikh yes. and he told him do you see the kindness and the rahmah this mother has for her son my kindness and rahmah for my creation is more yeah. than this and um, and alhamdulillah we have Sheikh Jawad and yourself of course too that reminds us of the rahmah of Allah and the kindness because sometimes we again I use we I, I mean you know what yeah. we focus on the ghadab of Allah or the and we forget about his uh, his kindness and his generosity and one of his kindness is that he gave us Imam Al Hussein <laughs> alayhi salam uh, for I, I know I've taken a lot of your time and you have a very busy schedule Sheikh so uh, if we can I would like to end with uh, you know something about Imam Al Hussein because it's in showing in the month of Muharram and what how what steps you think we can take to benefit uh, our relationship with Imam Zaman as well as uh, and therefore you know making our relationship with Allah of course better because if you make your relationship with the Imam better you'll make it with with Allah better through Imam Al Hussein Ali Salam and take this opportunity of the nights of Muharram maybe if there are any steps any advice you think that you'd like to share with us for how we can use these nights of Muharram to reconnect I don't think the connections ever lost maybe it's lost from our side but from Allah it's never lost uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you can think about your answer Sheikh Jawad as well on Sheikh. Yeah. Uh, if I want to say something for example just you know one point uh, if we can behave in the way that when we say this sentence to Imam Hussein, he would accept, mm. then I think we make great you know, achievement. In Ziyarat Ashura, we say, Ya Abu Abdullah, Inni Selmun Leman Salamakum, wa Harbun Leman Harabakum. And the second time it has extra that So if I meet Abu Musayn alayhi salam and say Ya Abu Abdullah inni salmun liman salamakum Would Imam Hussein tell me that yes you have tried to be at peace with people who are at peace with me mm. Or he would say no you are a liar You hurt your I don't know husband or uh, wife or sibling or in-laws or I don't know neighbors or colleagues or you know etc although they all loved me they all you know were at peace with me so to be able to uh, live in such a way that we can say mm. and if there is any enmity it's only with the people who are leman not harabani yeah so if someone is like Yazid, okay. But I don't have any right to fight someone who loves Imam Hussein. Okay? Even if they are doing something wrong, I cannot hate them. I have to control them. I have to stop them. Yeah? Suppose, for example, you know, a person, you know, maybe my sibling is burning the house. Yeah? I cannot hate him. I can try to stop him. Even needed, I can take him outside the home, but I should be respecting the bond that we have. Mm. Oh. Yeah? Rasulullah said to Amirul Mu'mineen, uh, sorry, 
said to someone referring to Amir al-Mu'mini, But now we see that uh, maybe sometimes greatest criticism comes to some Shia or from the Shia. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Sahih. It's not that uh, we don't need to, you know, correct ourselves or criticize, but all out of love, not hatred. Sahih. Yeah, because they love Imam Hussein. Mm. Even if they are confused, we need to love them and try to help them. So if we learn this lesson, because if you want to say, okay, if they are doing something good, I love them. If they're doing something wrong, I you know don't love them. Then you expand this to include every person who disagrees with you. <laughs> yeah. So in order to make sure that comes a problem. we have to go a little bit further and say, you know, as long as they love the mom, don't fight them. Don't hate uh -huh. them. Just try to help them and, you know, stop them if they're doing something bad, but out of love. So if I can say this to Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and he would say yes, I think that would be a great you know, achievement for us that he says yes. You are Salmun Laman Salamakum Baharmun Laman Haramakum. That's going to be very sorry. I, I let you go after Sheikh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What can you say after that? I was thinking of saying exactly <laughs> the same. I knew it. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. No, I have to say it. Huh? No. Um, <laughs> Um, so the question is, what should we do in these days of Muharram? Um, I, I think really the answer is different for every person because every person is on a different part of their journey. Asset. But um, wherever they are, there is something in the story of Imam Hussein that can help them. You know, if someone's going through difficulty and they feel like they they can't see God's love there or even they may question God's justness etc there's so much from the life of imam hussein that they can benefit from i think maybe one of imam hussein's best gift is that he went through so much difficulty and lady zainab and said still it's possible to see beauty it's still it's mm. possible to appreciate life because a lot of times when you tell people you know there's another way of life possible they're like you don't get me i'm through, going through so much pain like yeah I, I i see that there are other people who've gone through pain this is not to undermine your pain this is hope that no matter how difficult your life is you can still enjoy love you can still see beauty i think that's one of the best gifts imam hussein and uh, his companions and family showed us another thing is if someone has a difficult past in the sense that they feel like they've made so many mistakes and they feel bad well imam hussein's encounter with Hor ibn Riyah, he shows that no matter what your past is the moment you decide to change imam says you don't even need to be you know ashamed hold your head high so i i think everyone can find something in the story of Imam Hussein and his teachings that would help them correct their relationship with God because all of us have something that's blocking us from having that beautiful relationship with God. Whether it's a pain we have, whether it's a question in our head, whether it's our past. And so once we correct that, then life becomes so beautiful. Then, you know, our hand is in the hand of God, metaphorically speaking. And, and life just becomes so different. So I think everyone should look in the story, finding for what their missing piece is yeah inshallah. Inshallah. inshallah i'd like to um thank you both for your time i pray that inshallah allah gives you all the success and tawfiq in um, uh, your work uh, in propagating this uh, beautiful message and may allah bless you during the holy month of like muharram this. increase your ajr your tawab and inshallah you can join us once again this is the first time we've done this i've thoroughly enjoyed it i'm sure that those watching listening on different platforms will also uh, agree with me that they've benefited uh, so maybe inshallah we can do a, a part two after the holy months of muharram and safar uh, and from the bottom of my heart thank you for your time thank you thank you for having me thank, thank you so much thank you